kilogram block sits on the surface as shown. 20, ne 20 newton tension force is generated by a person pulling on the rope at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal as shown on the left. The kinetic friction coefficient is 0.2. Determine the acceleration of the block. This is a pretty typical physics problem, one that you're going to commonly encounter when you come across Newton's second law. And what I'm going to do is provide you with just a pretty simple explanation as to how to set it up and, and draw it. So as you can see, step one is to first produce a free body diagram for this box. So what we want to do for the free body diagram is we basically start with a point in the middle. And from that point, we're just going to draw all the forces that are acting on the box. So let's look at this box here and see what exactly is acting on it. So the first force that I can see acting on the box is the one that pretty much acts on everything, and that's gravity. And gravity is always going to act straight down. Uh, another force that's acting on this box is the applied force, which we can see here. Uh, that's pulling uh, you know, up and to the right. Another force that's acting is the normal force. Uh, we know the normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface which the box is on, so I'm just going to draw that, you know, right there. It looks something like that. And in this case, we are given a kinetic friction coefficient, so we do have to consider the kinetic friction force that's here. So it's going to be coming off and to the left. Okay, so basically if I take this and translate it down here into a free body diagram, I'm going to have a few things. One, uh, you know, just to repeat, I'm going to have the force of gravity just pulling, uh, that should be straight down, sorry it's not. Uh, we also have the applied force, which is pulling this way. I'm going to call that FA. The normal force, which is pulling up. We'll talk about the relative lengths of these in a minute. So that's the normal force. I'm just going to call that N. Uh, you might use R if you're taking IV chemistry. And then coming out into the left here, we're going to have the, uh, the force of friction. Sorry, I'm getting used to this tablet. Uh, so once we have that information, uh, it's not the best free body diagram, but it'll do. We want to determine the overall relationship of the forces and basically kind of what their values are. So the easiest one to figure out in this case is the force of gravity. That's something that you're used to. The force of gravity is always equal to uh, m times g. Uh, I'm going to use 10 for g. You might use 9.8. That's just to make my math easy. So uh, the mass of the block here would be um, 5 kilograms. And gravity is going to be negative 10, so it's going to be negative 50 newtons. All right, now the next thing I want to do is this applied force is, is kind of weird. We really want to think of how everything is acting in both the x and the y direction. Uh, this is acting in both, so what we want to do is we want to resolve it in components. And the best way to do that is just to think of a triangle and draw the two vectors coming out of it. So here we have our applied force, which we're told is 20 newtons. And the triangle that I'm going to make are the two vectors that comprise it. It's going to be one going straight to the right and one that's going straight up. And this angle here is 30 degrees. So what I can do is I can use trig functions um, to basically figure out what this side is and what that side is. So it's going to be the force in the y direction and the force in the x direction. Uh, if you remember your trig functions, we know that sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, which in this case is y divided by 20. So y would then equal uh, 20 times the sine of 30 degrees. So y is going to equal 10 newtons. Uh, for the x component, we could do cosine of 30 degrees is equal to x uh, divided by 20. And uh, you know, if we were to put this in a calculator, we would find that x is equal to 10 times the square root of 3 newtons. All right, so now that we've kind of done that, the, kind of the next relationship, uh, the next thing we have to see is that this block is not accelerating up or down. This block is only going to go left or right. It doesn't really make sense that this block would, would just levitate off the table, and it doesn't really make sense that this block is going to go down through the surface as well. Uh, the applied force is pretty weak. It's considerably weaker than the force of gravity, and that's why we're, we're going to kind of make this assumption. I'm going to write it up here that the summation of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. That's again because the block is neither levitating nor falling into the, the table. So what forces do we have acting in the y direction? Well, we have three forces. We're going to have the force of gravity. We are also going to have the normal force. And we're going to have the applied force in the y direction. So that's that value that I just found a second ago down here. 
that's that you know 10 newton value and that's how I'll have to equal zero so the force of gravity uh, we already said earlier was negative 50 the normal force we don't know that's actually why we're doing this we're doing this to figure out what the normal force is and the force uh, the applied force in the y direction is going to equal uh, 10 newtons so when we bring these together, you know, just kind of simple algebra, negative 50 plus 10 is going to be negative 40, so uh, f of n minus 40 equals 0, and we would find that our normal force is going to be equal to 40 newtons. And the reason we need that normal force uh, is really to find friction, so that's going to kind of lead us right into step 3 of this problem. A lot of different ways people explain this. I recently saw a teacher who said, just remember fun. Uh, fun stands for the force of friction is equal to the kinetic friction coefficient times the normal force uh, because physics is fun and that's you know, how you're supposed to remember that. I don't, not everyone's going to agree with that. But the, the normal force um, in this case is equal to 40 newtons and the kinetic friction coefficient is given to us as 0.2 newtons. Uh, so I can then figure out what the force of friction is. So I'm going to go ahead and put a subscript F here. That's going to be equal to 0.2 kinetic friction coefficient, times the normal force, uh, which we just said was 40. And we're going to find that the force of friction is equal to 8 newtons. Um, we've already figured out the overall forces in the y direction. I did that a little bit early in step 2. But now we can figure out the summation of forces in the x direction. So the summation of forces in the x direction is not going to equal 0 because, in fact, we kind of have an intuition that this block is going to slide to the right. So what it is going to equal is just the, the two forces that are acting in the x direction. If we, you know, we go up, scroll up here a little bit, we can see that the two forces were where this applied force had an x component and the force of friction, you know, over down here and to the left had, a, um, had, a, had an x component as well. So the summation of forces in the x direction in this case is going to equal the x component of that applied force, which we found in step 2 to be equal to 10 times the square root of 3 uh, newtons. And the force of friction, which is opposing it, so I'm going to say it's plus uh, negative 8 newtons. Remember, friction always opposes the motion or whatever force is being applied to it, and that's why I'm, I'm making it negative in this case. So for this, I'm going to make a, just a pretty simple approximation. Uh, the square root of 3 is about 1.7. Uh, it's not totally accurate, but it's going to work for here. And I'm just going to estimate this value to be 17. So that's where that 17 is going to come from. And then minus 8 newtons is going to be equal to 11 newtons. So what that means is that the overall force that is acting on this block, that the net force that this block is feeling is, is, is going to be 11 newtons. And what that means next is we can simply apply Newton's uh, second law. And of course, I wrote second saw. Um, I could redo this video, but instead of, I'm just going to do that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so we're, so we're just going to use the fact that the summation of forces is equal to MA. And in this case, the summation of forces in the X direction is equal to 11 newtons. And that's going to equal the mass of the block, which we said was uh, 5 kilograms times the acceleration of the block, and we'd be able to use this to figure out what the acceleration is. The acceleration would equal 11 divided by 5, uh, which is equal to 2.2 meters per second squared. And that's it. That's how you find the acceleration of a, a block that's being pulled on a, on a surface containing friction. Hope you found that helpful.